I've noticed there's been uh, a few um, articles come out recently about how some members of the Tea Party movement are actually yes. coming to Occupy Wall Street and saying, you know, we do have something in common and, or some things in common. Can you talk about that a little bit? You know, being involved in Occupy Wall Street it really opened my eyes to the Tea Party because having experienced the other side of the camera, you understand how some people are very eager to misrepresent or skew or kind of hijack a, a movement for political purposes. So when I have been in the past critical of the Tea Party, I'd like to re uh, frame myself. I'm more, I'm critical of their leaders. I'm critical of the politicians who hijack their movement. The reality is that the Tea Party patriots, the people who attend Tea Party rallies, they're the other 99% too. They're hurting, they have legitimate issues, and I want to have that adult discussion. Now, if the discussion is whether the what the role of government is, or uh, what role we should ask our uh, democracy to fulfill in governing the private sector, or even in just the role of government, that's a real discussion that we should have. That's a discussion that we've had since the founding of this country, whether it was states' rights or federal rights or local government or federal government. That's an honest conversation. I'm glad to have that. But if the conversation is going to devolve to name-calling or socialism nonsense, I mean, let's be honest, Wall Street's doing better than ever. If this president's a socialist, apparently Wall Street really likes socialism. But, you know, that's besides the point. I, I'd say that in jest. The reality is, to those Tea Party patriots who care about this country, who are willing to fight for this country, I love you, man. I'm really glad to be on your side, and I hope that you come and engage us in that conversation. When I was in Denver recently, I got to meet a couple of Tea Party Patriots who are attending the Occupy Wall, uh, Denver event, and uh, you can see it in their heart, man. They really wear their patriotism on their sleeve. I admire that about them. So I really hope that we can all set partisanship aside and have an honest debate on policy instead of questioning each other's patriotism. Now, I know you've got a, a beef with, the, with Heath Schuler. Can you talk about that a little bit? You know, Heath Schuler to me, represents the corporatist wing of the Democratic Party, and it really it is the cause of the enthusiasm gap that Democrats have that when we vote for this change and members of our own party stand in opposition, it creates a firewall between accountability and corporatism. So when you hear these people who call themselves Democrats but they govern like conservatives, it defeats the purpose of voting. I think Heath Schuler is detached from society. He's not uh, representing the people in his district. He's representing the health insurance companies. He's representing tax cuts for the rich. And I really wonder whether he's serving his own interests or the interests of America. So to me, Heath Schuler, a lot of blue dogs, I mean, Ben Nelson, Joe Lieberman, uh, John Tester recently, and I'm really disappointed about that because I thought John Tester was an honest guy. And I hope he does become an honest guy and starts acting in the interest of his constituents instead of people financing his campaigns. But I think Heath Schuler is a very good example because he's doing a disservice not only to his party, to his countrymen, to the civil society that we share. You know, without this accountability, you have lawlessness. And what these guys tend to do among the conservative wing of the Democratic Party is they undermine the whole system. Because what happens is, if every single Republican is a wholly owned in, uh, subsidiary of uh, big business, and you have a rotating cast of villains on the other side who take turns carrying water for big business, then what's the point of voting? There's always a governing majority that's willing to carry out that corporate agenda. Now, I'm not saying all Democrats are, are amazing. I mean, I, I'm picking on Heath Schuler and a couple people here, but I'm going to throw this at the entire Democratic Party, that you were elected to serve the best interests of your constituents, you're not here to represent Aetna, you're not here to represent Exxon Mobil, you're not here to represent Bank of America or Wells Fargo, you're here to represent people. And if you're more concerned with not upsetting the financiers of your campaigns, if you're more concerned with not supporting popular proposals like a public option or the uh, Sherrod Brown uh, uh, Ted Kaufman Act that was designed to break up the banks. You know, a lot of the guys who voted against that, it really shows whose side they stand on. So I'm just going to pick on Heath Shore a little bit because I think he might be tough skinned. He could probably deal with me. Um, and I'd like to ask him, who do you pledge allegiance to? Is it Bank of America or the people of the District of North Carolina, which you serve? Um, all right. <clears throat> now, what about Carl Rove? It seems like. Uh, yeah, I've, heard, I've, I've, heard you, I've heard you have a little problem with him. Can you talk about that? I'm wondering how many wars someone has to start before they're held accountable. I mean, it really speaks volumes of the kind of lack of professionalism that Fox News has, where they have literally a person who lied our country into war, giving senior political analysts or analysis. Um, 
Carl Rove really is the worst of the worst. He is the embodiment of the corporate capture of one of the great parties of America. You know, I would love to support the Republican Party. There's a lot of things they talk about that I do think are honorable and are valuable, honest conversations. But when you let a guy like Carl Rove hijack your whole party to only serve the wealthiest 1%, it does a disservice to Republicans. So I really hope that Republicans would hold them accountable. But if not, then we have to do that job. And to me, I think what Carl Rove does as far as being the bag man that helps funnel this secret super PAC money to candidates that are going to serve the wealthiest 1% as opposed to the interests of their constituents, I think Carl Rove does a major disservice to America on many levels. And I really think that if we're going to have an honest conversation, Carl Rove can't be involved in it because his track record is so dirty. I mean, come on, man. The guy's got more mud stained on than a living room rug. You know, it really comes down to the fact that if you're going to sit there and pretend to speak on behalf of America and then turn around and funnel secret funds from a few very wealthy donors in a non-transparent manner to hide what you're doing because they're ashamed of it. They don't want the names of their corporations stuck with these huge donations they're making. They don't want to turn around to America and say, you know, the reason we're demanding huge tax cuts for the rich is because we're going to use that money to speculate on Wall Street and bribe your politicians. To me, Karl Rove is a perfect symbol of exactly what's wrong with our political process. We want a democracy, not a corporatocracy, not an oligarchy. We want a system that's representative of people, not big business. And to me, it's also an accountability issue. Because if you let these big businesses override our democracy and just buy the whole system up, then there is no accountability and the market fails. Because when the market becomes skewed towards corruption, it's designed to fall apart. That's the thing they don't talk about market economics, that there is no place in the free market for corruption, if you really believe a free market is the answer. If you feel that the free market is the answer, where do you find place for corruption? Where do you find this idea that the private sector will police itself? It's obviously failed. And to me, I think Karl Rove is the perfect person to sell a totally failed system because he's just a very uh, dishonest person.